Hello everyone, my name is Rick, Rick van Bruggen from Neo Technology and uh, I'm at the London coffee shop of choice near our office uh, in London um, doing another inter interview for the Neo4j podcast and um, I'm uh, interviewing someone who I have I've interviewed before, right, um, <laughs> a while ago, um, Nigel Small from, uh, from our engineering team. Hi Nigel. Hello. Hey, uh, it's good to have you here. Um, reason for inviting you, somewhat in unexpectedly, uh, of um, to talk a little bit on this podcast uh, interview, is that I know that you've been uh, hard at work for the past, I don't know, 18 months or so at, on the um, Bolt uh, interface to Neo4j and the, uh, the new drivers for uh, different development languages. And I want to talk a little bit about that. So can you tell us a little bit about um, what is Bolt and what are the new uh, uniform drivers? Um, let's start there. Yep. Okay, so Bolt is the, uh, is the new protocol for interfacing with, uh, with Neo4j to uh, eventually probably replace the, uh, the old REST interface but for now sit side by side it it's a uh, it's a binary protocol it's developed entirely in-house um, and uh, we've built a, a set of four drivers initially that we've released um, that uh, that interface with Java Python JavaScript and .NET um, to try to try to broaden uh, broaden the reach of, of the software that we're offering in-house and offer something that's supported for, for those platforms. Absolutely. So, so Bolt, I mean, from my, what I understand, it, it, it's a binary protocol as, as opposed to the REST interface, which is, you know, ASCII-based, I suppose. You know, it's, it's clear text, Sorry, it's, right? It's, it's text-based. So, yeah. so the old interface, uh, the, the HTTP interface, uh, uses JSON to transmit its okay. payloads and as, as, a, as a data transfer format, uh, JSON has... Uh, challenges, let's mm. say. Um, there's certain limitations in what you can express. Um, so we've developed uh, a, a custom serialization format, and it's it's very much in line with the uh, with the uh, cipher type system. Um, it's based. It was, it's it's inspired heavily, let's say, by by message pack. So it's a very similar setup, but it was developed from scratch. Um, to, as I say, work with the work with the type system and, and work efficiently in the way that we want to transfer data to and fro. Okay. So, so what what, the, what was the primary goal of Bolt, and you know, what, what are some of the main advantages of uh, of using it uh, with Neo 4j 3.x uh, going forward? Well, uh, I say the type system is certainly one of them. So you, you get a much more um, much more native type system. You're sending fewer bytes to and fro, um, and we've got while we haven't focused uh, very heavily on optimization at this stage. We want to get the, 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 the feature set fully fleshed out. Um, there's a lot of optimization ideas we have going forward, but already, generally speaking, you're going to have a much faster experience uh, with, with Bolt than you have done with HTTP in the past. Yeah. Uh, as I understand it, there's also, you know, it, it sort of makes the server mode of Neo4j, you know, as opposed to the embedded mode of Neo4j, you know, a lot more you know, feasible for high performance applications, or, or is that not just not really the case? There's, no, there's. I mean, there are certain advantages. You've got a you've got a, a stateful uh, session that, you, that yeah. you now use, as opposed to HTTP, which uses a stateless setup. So each time you you make a request when you're using HTTP, you're sending uh, sending the, often the same set of metadata across. You're sending your user agent. You're sending your authentication information with each request that you do. Yeah. Um, with Bolt, you send that information at the start uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a session and uh, and then that's used throughout so you don't need to resend the same data so yeah you do get some efficiencies very cool but uh, as I understand it some some of the uh, side effects from implementing the the bolt protocol have been more on the driver's side right you know there has been uh, a lot of work that you've been doing also on uh, on the uniform drivers that we've been providing uh, in with 3.0. Can you talk to, to us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so the uniformity has been a, been a key part of this. We wanted to provide uh, a kind of a, a clean, uniform experience across different languages. So w so we picked these four to start with because they were they were four of the most important ones to us. Which four are those? Four are Java, JavaScript, Python, and .NET. Okay. Uh, and we wanted to make the experience as similar as possible. Uh, so we've, we've made sure that we've unified the use of terminology and, 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 and concepts that the drivers use across the board. So we have a session, we have a, a transaction, we have a, uh, a result set. And they're all, 
um, that, that they're all handled and, and described in the same way across all the drivers. And in fact, the, the developer manual, the new developer manual, actually has one story it tells of how to use the driver with simply uh, a, a difference in the, in the sample code that's embedded. You can just switch the tab and it shows you, shows you the same code in different, different languages. Um, so, so we wanted to get this uniformity in place, but we've, the, the, a lot of the difficulty has been around uh, making sure that we get the right balance between uniformity and, and, and an idiomatic uh, language use. So we didn't want something that was exactly the same in every language, but far alien to, to, to the developer in that language. Um, and actually getting that, getting that balance right has been, has been quite a lot of work. It's been, it's, it's been a real challenge at times, and we've, we've tried to respond to feedback where developers have come to us and we had a, we had a particular um, instance of that with the .NET, uh, .NET um, users telling us that the, 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 the methods we were using for iterating through results didn't feel natural. So we've gone back and we've reassessed how we were doing that. This was, this was still pre-release of 3.0 and we went back and we reassessed and we redesigned and we actually shifted the balance there much more towards idiomatic and away from uniform. Uh, and I think that's that's been something that we, you know, we, we couldn't do entirely in-house. We needed to, to talk to the, to, to the users in those ecosystems and tell us how, how best uh, that we could fit that in. And I, th I think now we've got something that's, um, that's pretty solid and, and, and should work well in most languages. Because in, in the past, you know, the language drivers you know, around the REST API in the past, right, they, were, they were mostly developed by the community. Right? They were mostly developed by people like yourself with uh, Python Neo and uh, you know, other, other, other people from the community have been contributing. Has that changed as well now with the Uniform driver set? We still, have, we still have some driver authors. It's interesting, actually. I mean, I've been involved with doing this for about five years or so now in, in terms of developing drivers. And seeing some drivers that have that have uh, been born and, and had a, had a life and then died off somewhere, other drivers that have that have carried on, um, but now we have some official drivers. Actually, we have to kind of work at how we want those drivers to um, to to sit alongside the community efforts. We don't want to go along and, 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 and rid ourselves of any community efforts that we have because you know the community is very very valuable and, and we we don't want to build. Uh, all these comprehensive idiomatic features in every single language. We want to provide a base, I think, is where we've, where we've left this. We, we, want, we want to provide a base um, uh, core driver that does, handles all the plumbing, doesn't let you have to worry about the, uh, the, the, the type system and the protocol detail. Um, provides a base API on which you can build other layers, uh, build an OGM, build um, other things that are specific to the language that you're in. So, you know, uh, you've got link in .NET, you've got the things that are specific to the languages. Um, so, uh, ultimately, we're hoping that the community drivers will be something that, that will actually sit alongside the, uh, the, the official drivers, and perhaps as a set of plugins or or something that can extend the, ba the, the official drivers. So, so then the, uh, you know, the officially supported drivers would be like the infrastructure for yes. more added features, feature-rich implementations Absolutely. by the community. Exactly how we go about that. Well, I don't think we've entirely, we haven't entirely decided yet, but, yeah, um, okay. but I've, I mean, as I've still, I'm still running the Python project, I've got, I've got a few ideas of how we can kind of combine the official Python driver with the with Python EO, with the extra features that I've added in, in a way that I don't have to duplicate my efforts and actually do the same thing at home that I do in the office. Yeah. So um, there's, uh, yeah, th there are a few challenges there and how we fit that in, but we, we want to make sure there's room for both, I think, ultimately. Very cool. Well, I mean, I think people can find a lot more information uh, on Bolt and on, uh, you know, how to write drivers and everything uh, online, right? We'll include some of those links. Uh, uh, on the transcription uh, of the podcast, um, I, I think it's a it's a great evolution, right? That uh, we're really taking this forward. So thank you very much for uh, thank taking the time and uh, and spending some thank time with me. <laughs> thank you for the coffee. Is what I wanted to say as well. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, I think uh, England has scored here. So uh, I heard a big row outside. So that's uh, probably good news. All right. Thank you, Nigel, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>